Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Marco Biteto. Um, as Chris said, I am a former Career Gear participant. My doctorate degree is in robotics. And in addition to that, I have also to date had accepted for publication 56 books that have a range of topics related to robotics and science. If someone could please click the next slide. Here are about 10 of the books that were recently accepted by the Apple Publishing Division and are available on the Apple iBook Store. You did click, thank you. Over here, is basically what I told you before, which is I've had 56 books accepted for publication through both Amazon, actually all three, Amazon's publishing division, Google's publishing division, and Apple's publishing division. So between the three online publishing companies, you can get access to books that were published by them. Okay, next, next slide, please. Okay, the goals right here. Uh, the goal. It, this basically is about the goals of the presentation is to introduce you to the Thanks. techniques of advertising your expertise, expertise and going um, and getting paid, and getting to, paid to do it. So Sorry about that. That's okay. I have difficulty seeing it. Well, we're here to help too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> one, one better. Uh, if possible, if one of us can read it. Yes, that'll work. That that would be helpful. I brought oh, my papers. computer also, but I forgot to bring the speakers. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so if possible, next. you could for the next one. How does one do this? Okay. Now, most most of us, when we're thinking, how do you advertise your expertise and or business and get paid to do it? The best way to do it is to deal with self-publishing and social media. <coughs> One does this by all of the following methods. Joining free professional networking sites and writing articles for these sites. Sure. Join a free self-publishing site and publish e-books that promote ideas that you are expert in and pertain to your business. Join a free writer's blog site and continually update your blogs. Create a free writer's page getting a free general email address. Mm -hmm. It is also important to get a free website-based web page. Correct. I remember correctly. Next slide, please. An, An example. example of a free professional networking site is? LinkedIn. A, right, perfect example. Professional networking site is LinkedIn. Another one is called Monster. The URL for the LinkedIn is http dot dot slash slash www.linkedin.com. And the URL for Monster is, as you can read on the board there, because I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. Next, please. Should do a movie, man. What is the difference between LinkedIn and Monster? LinkedIn is a full service professional networking site. This means that both other professionals and potential employers will be able to contact you through LinkedIn Utilities. Monster is a partial service professional network site, networking site 
This means that only potential employers can interact with you. Okay, next please. Okay. Join a free self-publishing site and use it to publicize your business's services. The two free self-publishing sites that will get you the best results are from Google and Amazon. In the case of Google's publishing division, you can submit manuscripts in either EPUB or PDF formats. Whereas, in the case of Amazon's publishing division, you can submit manuscripts in either DOCX or EPUB uh, for best results with a translator. The Apple publishing division only accepts ebooks and EPUB format and must be submitted via the Apple proprietary software that only runs on the Apple series or Mac Pro, MacBook Pro computers that run the latest versions of the Mac OS X operating systems. Uh, thank you. Actual URLs of the Google, Amazon, and Apple publishing sites. The Google Publishing Division is reachable by G O I N G two. Right, going to, and that whole thing of the HTTP slash slash support Google com partner search, Google plus books plus publishing. The Amazon Publishing Division is reachable at going to http dot dot slash slash kdp period amazon dot com. The Apple Publishing Division is reachable by going to that website listed up there and typing into the search box iBooks Publishing as the key search term. Join a free writer's blog. One of the best and most commonly used writer's blog is called Goodreads. This site offers both a free blog and also a free site-based email and blog activity notification service. The URL for this site is listed on the blue typing up on the, on the viewer. Create a free writer's page. The two best places to create your free writer's page are Amazon and Facebook. On Amazon, you simply go to the following link, which is on the screen, sign up for an account, and follow the directions on the site to help create your free author page. <coughs> on Facebook, you simply go to the following link, which is on the board there, and click on the particular icon that best fits your page's purpose. Real quick, that's also in the handouts. Um, if it's not, and because I know Marco said he changed some of the links up, please let me know. Um, it also might have been on a separate sheet that you had too. Yeah. Um, and then um, if we could go around, not that I don't Sorry. mind Chris talking, okay. but uh, you heard enough. So mix it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What type of things you will? I mean, what type of things will an author page need? The author page will require a recent photo of yourself in G JPG format. The author page will also re require a brief bio. What? Blur, 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 blur. blur. It is also advertised to put. I mean, it is also advised to put at least four professional qualities, quality fifteen minute video on, on the author's page. Four more. Furthermore, it it's it's highly recommended that you keep track of all the URL for all your web. Related pages when, when possible, interlink them. What types of things should be included on a bio blurb? Why you're qualified? Excuse me. Why are you qualified for what you do? How many years you have been doing what you do? What professional or trade organizations are you a member of, if any? List where you've been published, if any. Okay, now, wow. this is a sample bio blurb that I did of myself. Mm -hmm. Your bio blurb will definitely be different than, than mine. Yeah, mine mine's won't have doctor on it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, the the, the, the only difference between DR in front of your name and MR in front of your name is that DR, you learn that you really reach the point where you really don't know what you're doing because if you did you wouldn't have been doing it <laughs> that's a little joke yeah I know <laughs> okay 
if someone would be willing okay, to Okay, I got you. I got you. Oh, no. Okay. You want it? Read it. it? Here's a sample of a bio board. About Dr. Hold Mark. on, wait, wait. Do you want us to read the whole thing? thing? No, no, not the whole oh, thing. Just oh. read what uh, mm -hmm. some Mark minor read. points. All right, I'll do this one just so I can skip around for you guys Thank a little you. bit. Yeah. So it um, starts off describing about um, Dr. Marco Batello. He's a multiple award-winning blind roboticist, science researcher, and science writer. Additionally, he designs, builds, programs robots and other artificially intelligent machines. He's also been an award-winning scientific peer reviewer for the World Conference on Complex Systems. He's been part of the World Conference on Complex Systems Scientific Peer Reviewer two years in a row. He's currently a co-advisor on a doctoral committee at of at least one foreign doctoral candidate. Besides all of the aforementioned, he also has been awarded multiple certificates of awards from the LinkedIn website for being the most viewed profile and also for being the one millionth writer of articles for the Pulse website and also the most followed person on the Pulse website. Mm. He earned his doctoral degree in robotics from the U Union Institute in 1994. He earned his Bachelor's of Science degree in Computer Systems Engineering from the State University of New York in 1991. And he has done research on robotics, space, machine vision, and also robotics that are capable of learning by example. He also has written in professional journals and for layman-based science journals. Furthermore, he has delivered IEEE-based research papers, presentations at IEEE conferences. What is IEEE? Okay, IEEE is a professional organization called the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Ah, thank you. And that's Marco's blurb. Okay, now, of course, everyone here will be able to do a bio blurb if we could momentarily go back the pr to the previous slide by actually concentrating on these four questions. The bio blurb is basically to introduce your skill set in less than five minutes to someone reading it. My, my skill set took more than five minutes, but okay, we, we could advance two slides. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Where do I get free email addresses and web pages, you should say? The best okay. place for a professional email address is Google. The benefit of this site are that it allows you to allows you to have an email address, business phone number, and a fifteen gigabytes <laughs> cloud drive all in in one site. There are numerous free websites based web page services out there. I personally like Moonfruit. But it, that doesn't mean that they are the only one to choose from. There are many choices for a personal business based website based web page. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Here, here are more free website hosting service. Wix.com free website builder. Create a, a free website, http uh, We Weebly Website Builder, create a free website store or, or blog, http www.weebly.com. Yola made a free website. HTTP www.yola.com Free Website Builder Make a free website and hosting Webs HTTP www.webs.com I am creator of Free Website Builder Make a free website HTTP www.creator.com Create your website in minutes Website http www.website.com and the last one try for build a free website with web hosting http www.tripad.flyco.com no? Flyco Flyco Oh, like a movie Next. Next slide. Okay, this one is another way to establish expertise and, and advertise. 
And another way to establish your expertise in a particular area is to respond to a problem, a request for advice and opinion on particular matters. To do this, you must register at the below web webpage, uh, http um, dot slash slash www dot help heart reporter dot com. The last way that you can advise, um, the last way that you can advertise your expertise and work is to be a co-author on a research publication that will be presented at a professional conference. Okay, now, it could be a co-author for a professional conference or it could also be a co-author on a paper for a trade journal or a trade conference. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, at least several of you could do one for a trade conference. These trade conferences usually also want papers to discuss particular things. Let's say on carpentry. There's a trade conference that deals with carpentry those that are familiar with carpentry can actually discuss techniques, tools, and approaches to deal with problems that occur in particular situations dealing with carpentry. Next, next slide, please. Oh, we lost the slide, guy. Okay. This is an example of co-authoring an article where I co-authored an article with two other researchers. You want me to read, sir? Neuromorph uh, Development of neuromorphic SFIT operator and application to high-speed image matching. Authors Mohamed Shankal, Shankai, Dr. Marco A. V. Batento, Dr. Mohamed Saad Sarhesht. There are always a speed accuracy challenge and photogrammetric mapping processes including feature detection and matching. Most of the researchers have improved algorithm speed with simplifications of software modifications which increase the accuracy of the image matching process. This research tries to prove, improve speed without enhancing the accuracy of the same algorithm using the neuromorphic techniques. In this research we have developed a general design of a neuromorphic ASIC. What's an ASIC? ASIC is an acronym for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Okay, Applications Systems Integrated Circuit to handle algorithms such as SF, SIFT, which is? The preliminary level All right. for image processing. Interesting. We also have investigated neural assignment in each step of the SFIT algorithm with a rough estimation based on the delay of the used elements including MAC and Comparator we have estimated the resulting chip's performance for three scenarios. Full HD movies, video gram gram grammetry, 24 milli MP, 24 MP UAV photogrammetry, grammetry, and M MP means megapixel. Megapixels, okay and 88 megapixels image sequence. Our estimations led to approximate 3,000 FPS. Frames per second. For full HD movie, 250 frame, frames per second for a 24 megapixel image sequence and 68 frames per second for an 88 megapixel ultra scan image ultra sequence. Cam. What can, ultra what? Ultra cam. Ultra cam, oh I thought ultra scan, all right, I can't read that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ultra hard. cam yeah. image sequence, which can be a huge improvement for current programmetric, pro photogrammetric processing systems. We also estimated the power consumption. For additional assistance, contact Marco Email. Here at the Verizon.net, is the number 917-780-2379. That's it? All right. It is on the slideshow. Uh, thank you for helping me. No now, if there are any questions. Let me get one of those. Can you pass me one of those from the chair? Sure. Yes. Sure. Are you papers?
So he's pro you're a professional by here. Uh, you're a robotics guy. Right Correct. Yeah, you're a robotics guy. Uh, but you are writing a lot about robotics. So what's your business? <laughs> okay, my business is research yeah. in robotics and control systems. Your R&D, research and development? Correct. I used to work for Exxon Research and Engineering years ago. And also writing. Because as a, a doctor, you have to continually write and do research. So if you to don't... What, to document your work? Correct. Okay, do you have a specific place when you do your research or this is like a college-based research place or just your own place? Okay, I usually when I do research I have an actual space set up for me that's a makeshift lab for me to do the work. Because I work exclusively with robots. Uh, some of the robots, as Rogelin can actually testify, read books to me, print books. Others, I can actually hold a conversation with. And in fact, on YouTube, if you look under my name, Dr. Marco Deteto, there's a video of me having a conversation with one of my robots called Kate the Robot Interviews Dr. Marco Biteto. It's, it's interesting because the fact is Did how you say close hate the how, robot? Kate the robot. Yeah. How close are we to where what was the name of the movie where they had the child that played what was it in it was I I Oh God! It was back robot? AI. I robot. I robot. No, it was IA. That's correct. Yeah, the movie robot. was IA. Artificial intelligence. Artificial, artificial or AI. AI. Artificial intelligence. How close are we to something like that? We are quite close. Wow. In fact, the technology that I'm working on, that I originally worked on, uh, about twenty. It, uh, 21 years ago is now coming to fruition where it's now available in nanoscale nanochips, nanochips yeah. where the surface features on each chip are down to seven atoms wow. or seven nanometers nanometers, yes, seven atoms well, old, old story of the technology, which most of the discoveries were made way before technology yeah, allowed sure. to mm -hmm. use this. That's well, I know a little bit about this. Um, technically involved to uh, my basis, electrical engineering. I'm not the doctor. I'm far away from any discoveries. <laughs> that, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'm trying to discover myself lately. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but you did that in the back too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I like. Well, during my life, I like also. I was involved a lot in the, in the technology and well, all of the stories about you know basic, basic. Well, let's say bipolar transistor or unipolar transistor, which actually unipolar was actually research and practically written up before technology allows us to have it. They came on the market in a completely different wow. uh, a lot of the things which are still but you see robotics well robotics never interests me but I love science fiction, more science than fiction of course. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of for me that's kind of where it is going right now. Uh, Yes, I read about those bio transistors, let's say, which yeah, they are trying to use real bio ma material to build up electronics. They like they're, doing that with like yeah. they're doing that with actual to replace human so Marco's arms, arms yeah. right? No, you, so you're doing oh, that the that's the that's you're doing the process. Oh, oh, yeah. That's actually in the line field because there's actually a program by the government, and I have it 
discussed in one of my uh, books called The Future of Warfare, where the government is working on biocompatible implants, where the implants would actually be put into the human brain and translate thoughts to machine commands. Terminators. Wow. So we're close uh, to terminators. Not quite no. terminators, cyborgs. Cyborgs. Very interesting stuff to me. Um, I always tell the people, Marco, that I like talking to you because I, I like to learn about this stuff a little bit and know about it. But sometimes it comes gets to a language that I don't understand too much of. So, but it's just so interesting and stuff because we we we'll see this stuff in movies or on TV or stuff like that. Reading in popular science magazine. Yeah, but then. You know, that actual someone's here and they're working on wow. stuff like that or they know yeah. a and lot and about it in real life. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, and I appreciate you coming to talk about it and, and even sharing some of your, your personal stuff and how you do it so that um, this transcends more so um, for yourself personally too, not even just a business you might have. I know Marco does it business related, um, but it's really about him. And what he does, yeah. not not just like a business side of it. So well, when the I'm, so I'm the, 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 the this is, is a question. Ideas and yeah. Yeah. To move this is a question that's been bothering me right. for years. You can tell that's I'm a little older. That's why I my questions for this is. Is it okay to make an artificial intelligence, an artificial intelligence to have cog to be cognitive? In other words, like you said, the machine answers you back. You ask her a question, it answers you back. And I know that's probably pro programmed through all the different algorithms and everything else. That coupled with a feedback loop. Feedback loop, all right. Now, the question is, our brain works on biochemical electrical energy, like our memories and the synopsis is, go I'm gonna go a little deep into this, the synopsis is work with the, you know, the different things that connect to them and certain, you know, chemicals stimulate the mind to have certain memories. The human brain is a biocomputer. Are those electrical impulses will, will be eventually transferable to a computer mainframe to where you can actually take your mind and put it into the actual cyborg? In other words, we know we're going to die. My question is, our thoughts, our memories, what makes us us, will that be trend? Is that possible to take the the different types of the neurons or the different yeah. patterns that are in our brains that are our memories and eventually transfer it. There are actual uh, experiments that they're doing statistical experiments thought transference to machine algorithms. Right. Look at him and see his stuff. Are they successful? Get a job or just help you get noticed a little bit. They're still working on this. So uh, apparently they haven't so perfected well, this is an example of like but it is statistically kind of based an article are there any and then um, uh, standardized also languages of um, like a blurb article mm. that he there are many standardized but the lingua franca of artificial intelligence still is but if you list it, you could kinda and prologue get kind of a sense of like how he explains himself and work out there so list like that too has been transformed to what's now called common list, which has incorporated many of the abilities of prior versions of LISP that were developed at MIT, mm -hmm. and partly the abilities of Prolog are now encapsulated in what's called common list. Now, to further explain, in Common Lisp, Lisp was the first language developed to deal with list processing. As such, you can, from this AI language, build new AI languages, which is done constantly dealing with robotic programming languages. And the programs also self-teach each other to build upon themselves? There are two ways to, actually three ways to do that. First way is to use Bayesian statistics and constantly interact with the machine as you're training it to do specific things. 
The second is to use neuromorphic software and or hardware. Basing it basically on the human neurons, the neurons that would transmit. And analogous forms. Okay. Which is typically referred to in, in the, the arena as brain in a box simulation. The third is by actually connecting feedback loops and training a robot by actually physically moving its appendages. They do this to train welding robots and painting robots. So all of this is repetition of motions. And it records the motions as the sensors transmit the feedback, feedback for the position. Yeah, because I was always curious because they always said that to be, since our bodies break down and everything deteriorates because we're, you know, we're a living organism, our mind, like I said, is, a, is, the, is the ultimate computer, but it's made out of, of um, bio material. And it would be interesting to see if we were able to either download our memories into a computer or would it be something that would have to be a gradual thing? Or would it have to be something that would be instantaneous? And I'm wondering if you would be able to take everything, just basically, my whole thing is, well, I'm wondering if I could take what's in here, put myself in a database to be put into something else later on in our search for the, quote, fountain of youth. Potentially, that is possible. However, the trick is to convert neuro pulses into algorithmic form. That's the trick. That's a, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a trick. Yeah. How far do you think we're off from that? <laughs> uh, we still have a way to go. Finally. However, using neuromorphic techniques that's what makes it more possible. possible. The neuromorph yeah, neuromorphic techniques. That's when you mentioned that, that's why I, that, that just ticked. That's something... I, I've been curious in for about the past, say, 15 years. Yeah, but let's Those say we, we, st like we still don't cancer. know a lot about our brain. So that's another field where, well, algorithms are coming. Okay, say for instance. algorithm is always kind of trying to cut off certain angles which we cannot practically, well, which we can statistically. Right, just mm -hmm. try to uh, recreate, uh, recreate, develop. Because I was curious that if everything is bioelectrical energy, that if you take the if you monitor the brain's electrical impulses, and basically they're going to have to basically see is the are the memories just electrical impulses, or are they actual chemical and electrical interacting? It's actually. Uh, three, electrochemical. Right. It's also wiring. It's the brain is polymorphic. Right. Each memory is actually a circuit that That's forms for long term. Short term memories are simply pathways of neurotransmission of pulses. Definitely going to keep in contact with you, Doctor. We're going to Doctor Vedato. <laughs> We're going to the. Wow. Because it's the age old thing of as a man gets older in life, one does seek. Because then there's also the thing of religion, everything else that interferes with things. I'm not a religious man, never was. And I have always been a person of facts. My, my, my interest is astronomy, personally. And I always wanted to be around long enough to do, you know, to, you know, I'm in bad shape. Not have to trade in the body probably for a mechanical one if I ever wanted to go to Mars. But I was always curious because I read works on, you know, Asimov and a few other, you know, writers over over time. And it was just interesting that if you were able just to either do it over a period of time to transmit it to a to a database or if it has to be done instantaneous. In other words, as one mass fusion to 
to interface with a computer. I don't know if it's if it was possible. Would it be something that would be gradually taking your memories, or would it be something that would just go, like yeah. a like a trend, like a total spontaneous transfer? Okay, it would probably be like a scan. Think of it like a scan, examining region by region mm -hmm. of the brain at a time, as opposed to the entire brain at one shot. Right. Which uh, it sounds like it's doable. But you have to realize there are many layers of the brain, and each la layer has its own wiring. What we normally associate with consciousness and being is what's called the neocortical region, right. which is the top layer of the brain. It's also the thinnest layer of the brain. Like the Earth's crust. Uh, not a good analogy. More no. like, think of it this way. Think of it like an onion. You have many layers on an onion. Right, right. Right. In the brain, you also have many layers, layers. But they're convoluted layers. Interesting. You got already yeah, that's okay. This is, this is good. <laughs> we can't spend too much time here. This is, this well, we still got a little time. Oh, hell yes. But, um, yeah, I, I, that's why I said I, I like it because it is very interesting. Much, yeah. It is, because that was something that has been bothering me for years. And like mm -hmm. I said, with that neuro, what do you call that? What do they do, the neuro on the, for, the, for the artificial intelligence now? Mm -hmm. Neuromorphic. Neuromorphic mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. two points to it. First point is software, which is neuromorphic software. Second point is neuromorphic hardware. Mm -hmm. Now, the neuromorphic hardware comes in three forms. It comes in a purely analog form. One way. An analog and digital. And a purely digital form. And which way do you feel is the best way? Because sort of like an analog system they did for television, they did away with that and now we're digital. Okay, the analog uh, method of simulating neurons mm -hmm. works to simulate a neuron. However, you have problems with density. density. Because analog systems, as uh, the fellow here next to you right. uh, will probably testify, are susceptible to noise. You have to isolate them. Right. The digital, you have ways to isolate from noise. Because digital systems, you, you have basically, in, in an example, uh, a gate is a switch that's operated in saturation mode, okay. for on, and absence for off where you, you take a positive signal and it flips it to the on stage. You put a negative signal, pulls it down to the off stage. Mm -hmm. I worked in the digital, digital world also. Usually the level of signal, use, usable signal is much higher than the noise. noise. Yes. Now the noise Although there are, there are methods right now for the analog signals to measure them below the noise level. But right. the noise that you're talking but about, that's, is that's, that the background? That's going to technically. I is that, is that the background noise that everybody talks about? The uh, big bang? The no, 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 no. What type and of this, noise are you talking this about? This noise is electrical noise. That it's electrical feedback. Noise. It, it, it exists it's everywhere. part of it operating and also part of the electronics being at a high temperature. All right. Because you can actually also minimize the noise by putting the electronics into cryogenic temperatures. Slowing the activity almost to nothing. Well, uh, that's slowing that's activity. No. Exactly. To well, nothing. when you cool something down, you the motion slows cool down and stops. You could cool it down where the noise drops significantly, and at the same time, you could reduce the signal voltage uh, potentials that are being applied. For example, as you go smaller, the, the voltage and current, 
things. As you reduce the voltage and the current, you're able to lower the noise. It's sort of like, also it's sort of like the, flow, the flow. It's like the flow of electricity. The more electricity you're going to have flowing, the more noise. Like a larger river makes noise. And that's uh, similar. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Now, also, they also do design techniques to actually reduce the noise even more. Because right now, uh, your typical nano design chip, like the uh, Intel Ivory Tower which has on it, I believe it's, what is it, uh, 30, 32 64-bit processors right. on it. Actually, they're having, they're still having problems uh, bringing it to production, but according to the <coughs> papers that are out on it, it has a voltage level that's below one volt. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, dropping, dropping to that level is very high. Yes. Yes. I know. I know enough about electricity. I know. That's one of the reasons why they still haven't been able to bring it to market. Market. Yeah, it's still. A lot and of how much did they have in the brain? How that? We know how it's supposed to work, but we know we, know exactly we can't make how it how applicable, get. with practical application. Yeah. So I used to work for Exxon Research and Engineering. It was fascinating what we used to look at. Well, that's what it is. Technology is. Well, there is economy. You've definitely given food for thought, Dr. Mm -hmm. you know. What I was wondering, what you was mentioning about uh, the noise level with the voltage and everything. You know, the, the, the brain in a human being, you know, we can lower, higher, whatever, depending upon how we concentrate. Is that correct or not? Yes, but mm. the human brain is so designed where there are circuits that compensate for noise. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the question may be a little clear is what I'm trying to find out is that, you know, um, that's, that's what they're trying to do now. They're trying to do the, um, to get different circuits, the same way the brain works. They're trying to figure out which circuits would, uh, would best work together. They, I'm not quite okay. clear. Okay, what, what they do is <coughs> they, they take a model mm -hmm. of a neuromorphic system. Right. One example is the latest craze in neuromorphic technology is what's called deep learning. <coughs> and deep learning is very processing intensive. Mm -hmm. So what they do for deep learning as they do with the, the demonstrations from uh, what's that uh, graphics company called um, the graphics company eludes me right now but they uh, they actually take the learning that is done in software mm -hmm. freeze it into a hardware architecture mm -hmm. and then have it run off of parallel processing hardware. So, uh, wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's how they, in fact, they even have on YouTube several demonstrations of the neuromorphic hardware, mm -hmm. which is using the, I believe they call it Kepler accelerator. Yeah, the Kepler, yeah, I've, I've read somewhere about that. And using that, they've been able to demonstrate recognition of cars, street lights, yep. street signs, mm -hmm. types of cars, and pedestrians walking across an intersection. Yep. Incredible brute force way to do it, 
but they've been able to do it. Now we need technical questions. No, no more questions. This is the time for questions. I don't have any more questions. This is, this is getting too complicated. <laughs> No, nothing is, is ever, nothing is ever too complicated. You, Peter, really? That's why the book has to specialize. Peter said it's getting too complicated. I say it never gets too complicated. No, I'm getting just too lazy. Simple like this. They're getting old. Well, that, I mean, talking about this stuff, yeah, it'll drive your mind crazy. No, sure. no, this is, no, this here is, I'm finding this extremely fascinating because, like I said, for about the past 15, almost 20 years, my whole thing was as far as what is stored in my mind. Oh, can, I interface, can I ever interface what's me in my head onto a computer? So this way, when the uh, the biological part dies off, I'm still intact. I'm sure there's that's a legitimate there was, thing, there isn't, there it? A isn't recent, it, Dr. Pedetto? It was a, a legitimate movie. movie. Thing. We had yeah. a movie like that, yeah. 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 There's actually, actually a book you might be interested John, in. Yeah. Yeah. Frank, Frank Kibler. Kibler. The computer? It's right. called yeah. The Physics of Immortality. Wait a second. Let me get my glasses on. The physics of immortality. The physics of. Oops. Sorry about that. That was my cane. Mortality. By Frank Tipler. Frank Tipler. T I P L E R. Yep. He also wrote another book, which you also might be interested in, since you're interested Shoot. in. Shoot. Uh, astronomy. Mm -hmm. The Anthropic Cosmological Principle, wow. also by Frank Kipler. The Anthropic Cosmic... <laughs> cosmological. Cos cosmological Principle. 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 I think I read that one. I think that one I have read. It's, it sounds familiar, the Anthropic... Both books are around a thousand pages. Yeah, they're thick. They yes. That, that's why I think I may have... I, somewhere. But no, I've always been fascinated by that because, like I said, I walk with a cane, a couple times I've come close, and I sort of like to take what's in my head and put it into a computer, and this way when they eventually do get robotics or, or, or something that's sort of like a Terminator with living tissue or whatever, because I mean like the, the movie Artificial Intelligence, it was like, hey Joe, hey Jane, you know what I mean? I mean, they were out there, you know what I mean? Only I could say, I don't know if they're going to want to use any of us besides Marco in here as mine for anything like that. <laughs> Hey, I'm always willing to experiment. Yeah. But, um, no, yeah. It's 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 it. <laughs> if it works, why not? But, um, I mean, because, well, because basically, if you, you know, think. No, nobody's going to tell you if it works before I experiment. <laughs> there was so. a thing written by Isaac Asimov back in the 60s. It was a thing yeah. where they said when they were traveling, they created this ultimate computer. Right. And basically, it started out that the computer provided everything. Then these two workers had a $5 bet of, I can't remember the question what it asked it, but it couldn't answer it because what was the origins of the universe? It couldn't answer it. There's insufficient data. Then, you know, a couple thousand years goes on, someone else asks it, a couple million years go by where the humans have left their body, they're in an energy state, the mass consciousness. You know, because now it's also in another dimension because this machine is so big it has to go into a hyperspace dimension. And at the end of it, it said eventually after billions of years, oh, if it was end, if the if the universe will it will it will it freeze or burn? That's what the question was. And at the end, after billions of years, there was no answer. There was nobody else asking the computer questions. It shut down. And the knock, the, the thing was at the end of it, because I can't remember it right now, because mm -hmm. it's, it's not working. It was like, and on the seventh day, it rested. Like it, it, like it was cycled, like creation. It restarts itself, it ends cold, yeah. and it restarts itself again. And there was this computer, this huge computer. I can't remember the title of the thing. It was written by, it was a good, it was a good thing. It was only about two pages long. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Dr. Badano. I remember as uh, a teenager reading Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke, Clark. also uh, Robert Heinlein, Heinlein. and uh, you know, what was the other fellow? He wrote the Star Trek Roddenberry. episode. Gene, no, Gene not, 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 not. Yeah. He wrote the Star Trek episode called The City on the Edge of Forever. Forever. 
One with uh, what's her Harlan name? Harlan Ellison. Martin Ellison, yeah. That was one of the that was the best one I think one of the best ones they made in the Star Trek series was the it, it, it was interesting because he had a dispute with the Gene Roddenberry mm -hmm. as to how to do it, and he submitted his work to both Roddenberry mm -hmm. and also uh, presented it as material for the World Science Fiction uh. Committee, and he was awarded an, uh, an award from the World Scientific right. Committee mm -hmm. on his original the script, script, which he put into a story form. Right, where we went through the portal. Now, I don't know, like I said, nowadays on YouTube they have this new version of the Star Trek, where now I was watching it about a week or two ago where they take the city on the edge of forever and they actually now on the same planet where that portal is, there's also another one which is extremely large where they could actually drive the Enterprise through. It was a cheap, it's cheaply done because the individual people who are doing it, they, they pay for it themselves. But it was interesting the way they did it. They had the guy, the actual actor who starred in... Um, that uh, the the I forgot his name. He was the one where the he had that planet eating machine. It was long tube. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. But the gentleman who played the captain on the other ship, they actually had him. I mean, he was in his he's in his eighties, but they had him make a cameo appearance. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Now we can we can okay. So we can contact you by email. And just say we're from here? Yeah. Are we here? Yes. Um, Marco's kind enough to always share that info. Uh, if you want to, yeah, just let him know uh, here in, you were at the workshop. And yep. any, any I will definitely like follow up with you, well, Dr. Benedetto. My name Marco. is Chris Sensland. Yep, Pleasure Chris, you. can't forget him. I look like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> About as old as I'm sure. Huh? He's coming back? No, yeah, when are you going to have him back? He will in you look like no, no, no. That's just um, his email address from Verizon. Yeah, yeah. I look like, I look like, what's his name? I look like Yule Brenner, not Yule Brenner. I look like um, Burl Ives. You remember Burl Ives? I look just like Burl Ives. Ow. Take your time, Marco. Thank you very much. That was very, I found that very interesting. Thank you, mate. I was hoping a few other guys...